Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mimi Makes, a crochet slash knitting slash sewing, um, creating blog, I guess we could call it. I am Beth, Dora Beth Bays, and um, I learned to crochet, knit, and embroider when I was just a little over seven years old. My grandmother would come to our house when mother would go into the hospital to have another child. I am the second oldest of six, and um, yes, I was the one that would sit and listen and learn how to do the uh, wonderful crocheting and knitting and embroidering and tatting that my grandmother would teach us, um, teach me. I guess I was the one who would sit and watch and uh, would get a personal tutorial. So um, just a little bit about me. I am 57 years old. I have started doing crochet, knitting, and the sewing and embroidery full-time as I um, don't leave my home very often. I have a very uh, rare disease called hypogamma globulinemia, which is just a very big word that uh, means that my body does not make immunoglobulin or um, in layman terms, I don't have any weapons. Uh, I don't have any ammunition uh, in my weaponry. Um, I would say that uh, another way to say it is if you go out to um, battle and you're on the front line, but you don't have any ammo in your, um, in your weapons, that's me. Um, so I struggle with my health, I struggle with um, bronchitis, sinusitis, I'm struggling right now with um, laryngitis, this is not my normal scratchy sounding voice, um, I just have a lot of other things going on with my um, intestines and um, yeah, just a whole lot of gut issues that um, were not addressed for many years because I was just, um, I was sick so often that I was, I just didn't get treated medically um, as a serious patient. I was considered probably uh, a hypochondriac by my primary care providers who um, would literally say to me when I would come to an appointment, so the nurse says you've got several things going on today, but uh, as a doctor with a full-time um, job of seeing patients on a daily basis, I can only treat one of your ailments or complaints today. And I was like, no, uh, today I'm dealing with this, this, and this, and I will not be able to come back tomorrow for another copay or next week to pay another copay. I have a lot going on. I'm being ignored by you. I have been here so many times, and you blow it off and say, oh, you just have allergies, or you just have something else going on, or you should probably try to change your diet because you're always um, sick or throwing up or having gastric issues. You should probably watch what you eat. So, hmm, this has gotten into a little more detail, hasn't it? So, I'm dealing with um, finally having vindication for knowing something was definitely wrong with my with my body um, and suffering through it because I would not um, go see the doctors because I didn't want to hear them 
uh, belittling me, making fun of me, or acting like I just had um, the need for attention. Yeah, they made it sound like I was a drama queen and I just needed someone to give me attention for the day or, you know, talk to me about my health issues. When all in all, I had a primary immune deficiency, and that's where um, the hypogamma globulinemia word comes into play. Um, I was diagnosed, actually, after seeing a new primary um, who said to me right off the bat, you are a very sick lady. And we need to get to the bottom of this. There's a mile-long list of medications you're on. We need to see why you're on them. Uh, how can we better help you with your pain levels, uh, your gastric issues, uh, all of the things that you're being treated for. We need to get to the bottom of this. Um, and interesting enough, he said to me, I have been reading over your charts for the last three days, uh, preparing for this appointment today. So I'm here to listen to you and see what's going on. And I can tell right now that you are not well. Let's see what's going on here. So that very day, I literally had pneumonia and bronchitis, a bacterial UTI, and suffering from the flu that had already killed many, many people early 2018. Yeah, early 2018. Yes, so I actually ended up being hospitalized. Uh, by this doctor who said, look, we need to get you treated and fast. Um, so I was running a really high fever in the office there. Um, my normal temperature is 96.7. That is my norm. If I am running a temp of 99.7, that is a fever for me. 98 Point seven is a fever for me um, because my immune system is messed up and my body cannot regulate my temperature um, on a normal level. 98.7, I guess, is, you know, the normal for most people. But because my primary immune system is all messed up, um, a temp for me is anything over 96.7. So I was uh, seen in the triage in the ER. They said, oh, your temp is, you know, low grade for most people. It's at 100 point, 102 point something. But you are really burning up. And I was like, yeah, think, Yeah, okay. So... Bottom line, I was taken back and done all of the uh, exams, the blood work, um, urine, you name it. And the doc comes in and says, well, you need to call somebody because you're not going home. You have the flu and this, this, and this. So he goes down the list of things that's going on with me. So I was admitted, was in the hospital. That was my New Year's, January um, 2018, was in there for probably two weeks with back-to-back, -back, piggyback IV antibiotics, trying to get the bacteria infection out of my bladder and um, dealing with um, pneumonia and the flu. Um, around the clock respiratory therapy and then when I was discharged I had um, uh, my primary refer me to an immunologist because I had told my 
former primary that I think there is something really going on. I'm sick all the time. You need to really, you know, order some other labs to find out what's going on with me. I think I have some immune issues. And her words to me was, honey, we just don't order blood work on a whim. And I'm the doctor here. I know what I'm doing. And I'm thinking, sure you do. That's why I am here all the time and I'm always sick and I go home sick and come back the next week sick because you do not take me seriously. You're not checking into my medical records. You really don't have a clue what's going on with me, how many infections I've had to deal with, how many antibiotics I've been on that hasn't worked. So something is wrong and you're not taking care of the problem. Um, yes, I've had two surgeries this year, 2019. I had a uh, rotator cuff repair on this shoulder that needed to be done for at least two and a half years, but the same former primary uh, care provider told me, there's uh, nothing going on over here. You just have a little bursitis, uh, toughen up, deal with it. You know, work that arm, it'll go away. The more you work it, the, the you know, quicker you'll heal. And surprise, my rotator cuff was torn into places. I mean, just torn into two, uh, severed. And she just had blown me off. Uh, finally sent me to physical therapy. Physical therapy wouldn't touch me, said, look, there's a really bad tear. You're dealing with some serious issues in here. What you need is to see an ortho surgeon. I told her what they said. She has a meltdown. It's like, whatever. So she sends me to the ortho surgeon. He does the uh, MRI. And it's like, wow. Uh, yeah, we need to get you in for surgery. Yes, so I ended up having to have surgery on this shoulder um, two years, two years after the accident that caused it. Um, so that was finally done and thankful. And then I've had pacemaker surgery. That was in, this was done in February of 2019, and the pacemaker surgery was, yeah, there's a horrible scar. The pacemaker surgery was done May the 6th of 2019. Um, that needed to be done a long time ago. But when you can't get a doctor to refer you or send you to someone who can help you, uh, you suffer. And that's how a lot of people die. Just saying. Uh, my heart rate was at 35 sometimes, as low as 35. Um, don't know how I survived through the night sometimes. I um, was blacking out behind the wheel. Uh, so I had not driven since December 17th, 2015 because of blackouts. And finally, a um, cardiologist said, look, you got some heart issues. Your heart rate is uh, totally dipping down to the point where you are uh, going unconscious. Surprised you haven't just died, you know, in all of those wrecks you've been having um, where you don't know what's going on. You're just like out of it. Yeah, it's been a little bit crazy. So I do have some chronic health issues. I have two college degrees. I really am not working in either field at this time um, because of health-related um, issues. So this is where I find my time. This is where I get my mojo, my crojo too, is by crocheting and making things for my grandchildren. So they call me Mimi. So I think that I'm going to uh, call this blog Mimi Makes because I want to make things for my grandbabies. Um, I want to make things for my family, for people I love. 
and I want to make things for um, for myself to be able to feel accomplished because there are so many things that I cannot do anymore. I um, have taught school, lived in the Petri dish where all the germs and ickiness is, um, snotty nose, kids, feverish kids, and not knowing that I had a primary immune deficiency in every little germ was just going into my nostrils and mouth and wherever um, from the littles and as a child I was sick all the time um, if my siblings got chicken pox I got chicken pox worse if they had the measles or mumps it was double um, issues for me because I had no germ fighters or antibodies to defend me from all of the stuff going on. However, I have survived by the grace of God to be age 57 and I know that a lot of folks, including family, uh, considered me a drama queen as a child or as a young adult. Uh, because they thought I just wanted attention um, when I was ill or was hospitalized. Who wants to go to the hospital for attention? Nobody wants to be in a hospital. Nobody wants to be stuck by needles. Um, I, least of all, uh, want to be stuck by needles because I have horrible, horrible veins. I am black and blue from labs that were drawn last week last week yeah and I'm still battling with yes bruise bruise six sticks before they actually were able to draw enough blood to um, do the lab work that was necessary it's a little insane but now that you know a little bit about me not a not everything because I can't say it all at one time but um, I absolutely love crocheting. It calms me down. It takes off a lot of the anxiety that I deal with from daily basis with uh, medication and the things I have to do to survive. Um, I do get a infusion treatment every three weeks of high cuvia, which is a um, medicine that is made using uh, human plasma and other um, materials or medicines to infuse into my system um, immunoglobulin. I get 50 grams of immunoglobulin uh, immunoglobulin every three weeks and I infuse it uh, subcutaneously which means through my soft tissues in my body uh, because I have no veins I do not go to the infusion center and have it done intravenously I have it done um, sub Q which means it goes into my thighs I infuse into my thighs I have two sites two needles and I usually start the process about 11.30 at night, uh, every three weeks, and once I get everything inside, um, the needles, and start my pump, my IV bag is, is set, and the pump is set to um, go off whenever it's completed, and about seven hours later, I wake up, take the needles out, and I've done my infusion um, for the next three weeks. So the immunoglobulin that goes into my body is made up of human plasma. If you have ever donated plasma, thank you. You have helped save my life and the lives of many, many uh, friends that I have who have um, primary immune deficiencies. There's different names. Uh, we're called zebras because uh, each person 
has a different um, different stripe. No zebra stripe uh, stripes are the same. Um, I do have a lot of zebra things in my um, house at this time. I've had people buy me zebra purses, uh, zebra throws. So if people come in my home and see zebra stuff, they're like, yeah, like zebra stuff. I'm like, hey, I am a zebra. A person with a rare disease is called a zebra. Um, that's what we're identified as, as very rare. Um, and that's where the zebra uh, mascot or the zebra, um, yeah, we, we just call us zebras because we're rare and none of us have the exact same disease. Every, every person with the rare disease has different um, subclasses that identify them and identify their blood issues or lack of uh, cells in their body that work properly to fight off germs. So that's where we are right now. And um, I hope I haven't bored you to death with my stuff. Maybe in a next vlog, I will share some of the things that I have to do to prepare for my infusions. And um, some of the things that I do while infusing, if I'm not able to sleep, is crochet. And behind me is some of my wonderful um, yarn that I have accumulated. A lot of this is my stash from years ago. Uh, some of it is from a wonderful friend who um, was able to acquire a bunch of yarn from an estate sale. And she blessed me by sending me a couple big boxes of the yarn that she didn't feel she could use. And um, we just made a little exchange, and I'm just tickled that um, there is something that I can do uh, without being out in the public arena, exposed to all kinds of germs and stuff. Pretty much, I stay in my yarnscape or in my home unless I have medical appointments, and I have just begun... Uh, Stepping out of my fear factor area of, oh, I'm going to catch something, to going to church at least once a week. Yeah, I miss church terribly. I used to be in church all the time, uh, three days a week, three times a week, um, singing in the choir, just being in the crowd of people and getting sick and sicker and not knowing why. So... When I was diagnosed, I sort of like became a hermit, I guess, somebody that never leaves their home because of fear. So I'm trying my best to believe and um, allow the infusion to work for me. How do you know that the infusion is working for you if you... Uh, don't give it a chance to do uh, what it's supposed to do, prevent you from being sick. So being out in the public arena, I usually wear a mask, uh, cover up when I fly. Um, I definitely wear a mask because, you know, in an airplane you're just breathing recirculated oxygen. So <laughs> um, I do take care of myself in that respect because... Um, I have the chance of getting sicker than most people when I do get sick. So protecting myself by wearing a mask is definitely something I do in hospitals, uh, at doctor's appointments, and on the airplane. So those are my three uh, places that I definitely will not go without protection. Um, just because there are risks out there and I really have um, no germ fighters to defend me. The ones that are being infused in deplete in three weeks, so I have to do it again. So there we go. Uh, I have to do that. My um, oh, 
today in the mail, I did get uh, some wonderful, wonderful yarny goodness, which is just my favorite way of describing um, the wonderful yarn that comes to me that I order. I don't normally shop in public. There we go again with that fear issue. Um, but I order my mail or my yarn online. Um, so it's a surprise to me what comes as much it is as it is for anyone that's watching this. It's probably um, crazy for some people because you're like, hey, how did you, how do you not um, go out and feel of that yarn before you get it. Well, I did when the Hobby Lobby haul was going on. I managed to get out there and get me some good stuff. A lot of this is the Hobby Lobby. Um, but, yeah, this stuff here is Hobby Lobby yumminess that I am looking to acquire more of. But Hobby Lobby is like, we don't have it anymore. This is September sunset, and there was only three skeins of this when I came uh, into my local Hobby Lobby, and I need more of it to make a beautiful scarf for a wonderful friend. Um, but here we are with a, I have no strength, I'll be right back. I made it back. Let's see if we can get into this now. Maybe. A little more tearing. Oh my goodness. This is called Boeing. 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 This is like some kind of cute little. Let me get into it. I'm so excited when I get yarn. New yarn, recycled yarn, um, shared yarn. heavens it is so stretchy that's why it's called boing boing we have 80 grams 2.8 ounces made of 48% acrylic 44% cotton 3% polyester, 3% nylon, and 2% elastic. This one is called Trampoline. Uh, this was purchased from a um, outlet that uh, helps companies that are going out of business sell their yarn. They will go in and purchase whatever's left over and sell it as a discount to folks like me. Um, I found out about this group through a beautiful secret yarny, yarnery crochet community that uh, I am a part of. And this is from a company called Discontinued Brand Name Yarn. DiscontinuedBrandNameYarn.com. You can look it up under DBNY. Um, wait. Yeah, DBNY. Um, 
or my invoices from Cherry Tree Hill Incorporated, Barton, Vermont. So these sweet, sweet little um, balls of yarn were $3.50 each. This one is called Blue Boing, and it's the same weight, the same everything, but Bernat Baby Stretch. And I can see that it was $7 a skein at the little yarn shop that went out of business, and the this company went in and got the rest of their inventory, paid them for it, and are giving us a crazy discount. Doesn't have a smell. So, amazing. I actually um, was able to get this yarn for a total of $5.03 for both of them, plus shipping because they were having like 80% off sale at the discontinued brand name yarn store. And this was cheap, cheap, cheap. Now, here is a little trick that I have completed. This is a completed whip. Um, if you're wondering, a whip is uh, a work in progress. So this is no longer a work in progress. This is a done deal for my sweet, sweet new um, baby doll that's coming into our family. He's, he's almost here. Um, after 16 years of waiting, my first cousin is having her first child. And it's a boy. This is the cute little jumper onesie romper that I have made for him. Um, yes, I just went a little crazy using my own uh, stitch uh, and design here. Of course, you can probably find something similar uh, if you look, but I did my own thing. And this is the absolutely beautiful and soft and yummy cuddly corner to corner afghan that I made for this precious baby and I just could not resist adding a little bit of something special to go with this afghan so I got a little creative and created a cute little outfit for him and his mama is already like, oh, I can't wait for him to wear it. So he should be here any day now. So I need to get this packaged up and delivered to the sweet mama and papa so that they will have it when the little man makes his arrival. His name is Waylon. What? I know, right? Waylon. Oh, Waylon. What a name. What a, a name. He's going to be carrying that big name. And so excited to deliver this precious gift to him. Throw that over there um, with my other stuff. But this was the sweetness for today. It's going to make something cute and adorable. Um... I do have some sweet, sweet granddaughters who love these brilliant, bright colors. So there might be some hair bows made out of this business. Boing. Let me do that again. Boing. Boing. Lucky, come and say hello. Come and say hello to all of our friends. My sweet little fur baby is trying to figure out why he's not getting all the attention today, but hey, stuff like that happens. 
this stuff here is the most beautiful dark horse yarns from that same place discontinued name brand yarns and I'm making a scarf out of this with a matching hat and uh, fingerless mitts for my daughter. She is a um, senior at the university this year and walking in the cold, cold weather of Kentucky winters, yeah, she will appreciate the softness. Today actually is her birthday, so I need to get back to finishing this, so I will I will sign off of here uh, because this Mimi has a lot more stuff to make. Keep making those yummy, yummy creations, ladies and gents, and have a blessed day.